Oscillations and waves are everywhere. Here's a simple example of an oscillator. Uh, we got a spring here, and I'm attaching a mass, and we can excite vertical oscillations, <clears throat> the mass on the spring, something like this. The motion repeats here, and an important quantity here is the period. The period is the time for one cycle. So for example, it's the time for the mass to go from here to there, or you can do it from down here, there to there. Now springs satisfy Hooke's law, and Hooke's law states that the force exerted by a spring is proportional to its displacement from equilibrium. So by equilibrium we mean x equals zero here. This is when the spring is in its completely relaxed state and there's no force. If I then pull the mass aside in some positive direction, the spring exerts a negative force. That's why we have the minus sign here. And the force is proportional to the displacement. If I go twice as far, I get twice the force. The constant of proportionality here is called the spring constant. <clears throat> now you can set this force equal to the mass times the acceleration, that's Newton's second law, you get a differential equation, it's simple to solve, and here's the result. The result is what we call simple harmonic motion. The displacement varies sinusoidally in time, it's part of the sinusoid here, and the period here <coughs> is given by this expression. And you'll notice here that the period only depends upon the ratio of the mass to the spring constant. In particular, it does not depend upon the amplitude. So we have a prediction here that we want to test. If I double the amplitude or have the amplitude, I'm still going to get the same period according to our theory. So let's check that. Now, immediately, however, we have a problem. This system's not the same as this there's an additional force that's exerted on the mass here. That's the force of gravity, but it's a constant force. So it's reasonable, and you can show mathematically, that the effect of a constant force is just to shift the equilibrium point down. If we were on the moon, for example, the equilibrium point would be up here somewhere because the force is less. The force due to gravity is less. Going from the moon to the Earth, this would have some period here. Going back here on Earth, we're down here, and it's going to have the same period. Okay, uh, next problem. We want to time oscillations. Am I going to time just one oscillation? No, that's not a good idea. And the reason is, there's going to be some error when I start this and when I stop it. I can't do it very precisely. So to reduce the effect of that error, we're going to time many oscillations. We'll time 10 oscillations. And I'm going to pick up, it's easier for me to pick up on when it bottoms out. So I'm going to start there. Okay, so let's look at small amplitude first, relatively small amplitude. And I'm going to start it when it bottoms out. One, two, three. Ten. Okay. So 11.00 seconds. So the period we got, the time, the period was 11.00 seconds, hasn't changed, 11.00 seconds for 10 oscillations. So this is 1.100 seconds. That's the period. Now, let me reset this. And let's look at a much bigger amplitude now. Ah. One, two, eight, nine, ten. Did I stop it? Yeah. Eleven point one seven. So for high amplitudes. We got, let me make sure here, we're one seven. So we got a period of 1.117 seconds. They're not the same. 
And it's not surprising because of the start and stop error. Uh, the issue is whether or not these are equal within the experimental error of our, of our system here. Um, and that, that's, that we could only determine that with a detailed quantitative error analysis. The way we uh, state the error here is you can see that it's, they deviate by 17 milliseconds. Usually we don't state an error that way. It has more meaning and it's easier to understand by looking at what's called the percentage difference. And the percentage difference here we can see, you can see these deviate by 17 milliseconds out of about one second, okay? That's 17 parts out of about 1,000. So that's 1.7 out of 100. So here we have roughly 1.7 percent error. So the, the error is roughly one, one or two percent. And that seems reasonable, seems reasonable for a crude experiment like this. Now, we shouldn't stop here. <clears throat> we should try to get a physical feel for how the period can be the same for, for, for all amplitudes here. How can that come about? Well, if you look at the small amplitudes here, you'll notice that the velocity is relatively low, right? But the distance traveled is also low. It's also small, right? Here, the velocity is bigger, much bigger, but the distance is, is much bigger. So it's reasonable, it's plausible that those two effects could compensate each other and we get the same time here as we get here. And that's indeed what the theory shows us, the mathematical theory. Uh, okay, so to conclude here, when we have Hooke's law for an oscillator, the motion is simple harmonic. It varies sinusoidally in time. The period is independent of the amplitude. It's given by this expression. It's independent of the amplitude. And this holds for all oscillators where, where Hooke's law is valid. And one of the reasons this is important is that a similar situation occurs for waves. Thank you very much for watching.